Hi and welcome back to Free Science Lessons. By the end of this video, you should be able to work with micrometers and nanometers. You should then be able to describe the uses and limitations of the light microscope for studying biological specimens. We're going to start by looking at micrometers and nanometers. Now this can seem a bit tricky, so it's worth watching this section a few times until you get the idea. You're probably used to working with millimetres. Remember that one metre is divided into 1,000 millimetres. A millimetre is about the length of this fingernail. Now in biology, a millimetre is actually a very large size. Objects in biology are often much smaller than this. If we divide one millimetre into 1,000 equal parts, then we have a micrometer. A bacterium such as E. coli, which is found in the human large intestine, is around one micrometer in length. In biology, a micrometer is still quite large. Objects inside cells can be smaller than this. If we divide one micrometer into 1,000 equal parts, then we have a nanometer. A typical ribosome from a human cell is around 25 nanometers in diameter. Now I should point out that you often have to convert numbers between different units. So you need to learn that one millimeter equals 1,000 micrometers. To convert from millimeters to micrometers, we multiply by 1,000. One micrometer equals 1,000 nanometers. And to convert micrometers to nanometers, we multiply by 1,000. OK, now we often use a light microscope in biology. And I'm showing you a light microscope here. The first light microscopes were invented in the 1600s. And I'm showing you here a replica of an early light microscope. Both the early and modern light microscopes have several features in common. They both have an eyepiece lens. They both have a stage for the specimen. And they both have a focusing dial. Now the first light microscopes could magnify around 300 times, whereas a modern light microscope can magnify around 1,000 times. And we're going to be looking at magnification in a later video. Light microscopes have one big advantage over other types of microscopes. And this is that we can use light microscopes on living cells. This means that we can explore processes such as cell division or movement of cells. However, sometimes we need to use a stain and these can kill cells. Now, there's one big problem with light microscopes, which is the problem of resolution. And this is due to the nature of light itself. So what's meant by resolution? Resolution is the ability to distinguish between two separate objects. Let's look at an example. This diagram shows a low resolution image. You can see that the image is blurred and it's hard to make out detail. Here's a high resolution picture of the same image. And we can see that the level of detail is now much greater. Look at the area shown by the arrow. In the low resolution image, we can see a blurred red object. However, in the high resolution image, we can see that this is actually three separate objects. So resolution is the ability to distinguish between two separate objects. Now we need a more scientific definition for A-level biology. In A-level biology, resolution is defined as the minimum distance between two objects where they can still be seen as two separate objects. And that's a key definition which you need to learn. For a standard light microscope, the limit of resolution is around 200 nanometers. As I said before, this is due to the nature of light. The wavelength of visible light is around 400 nanometers to 700 nanometers. If two objects are closer than 200 nanometers, then we cannot see them as two separate objects using a light microscope. In this case, we can use an electron microscope. And we're going to look at that in a later video. OK, so hopefully now you can describe light microscopy. 